Okay, this is uh, 441 in the University Physics book. So let's read it together. Uh, to study damage to aircraft that collide with large birds, you design a test gun that will accelerate chicken sized objects so that their displacement along the gun barrel is given by this equation. The object leaves the end of the barrel at t equals 0 0.025 seconds. How long must the gun barrel be? What will be the speed of the objects as they leave the end of the barrel? What net force must be exerted on a 1.5 kilogram object at t equals 0 and t equals 0 0.025? So we have this displacement as a function of time. And it's given by 9.0 times 10 to the third meters per second squared times t squared minus 8.0 times 10 to the fourth meters per second times t cubed, second cubed times t cubed. Okay, so that's the displacement as a function of time. So we're going to use Newton's second law, which says force equals mass times acceleration, but what we're going to do is um, the net force, we can calculate the acceleration as a function of time by taking derivatives So the first one is just a matter of plugging in t equals um, the, the time that's given. So they say it, it'll take this long to get out of the barrel. So to find the length of the barrel, you just need to know what the displacement is at, at this time. So we're going to t equals 0 0.025 seconds. Let's plug that in there. So you get 9.0 times 10 to the third meters per second squared times 0 0.025 um, seconds quantity squared minus 8.0 times 10 to the fourth meters per second cubed times t cubed And if you do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause for a second because I'm just going to make a copy of something. Okay, so we're back. I just wanted to copy of the the answer so I knew if I did it right or wrong. Anyway, what we're saying was that all you have to just plug the number in here to find the length of the barrel. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, notice the units work out. Meters per second squared times second squared gives us meters. And meters per second cubed times second cubed gives us meters. Okay, so we have 9 e to the third power, just 9,000 times 0 0.025 squared minus 8 e to the fourth, 10 to the fourth times 0 0.025 cubed. And I get 4.38 meters. So x is uh, 4.48 meters. Let's see if that's the right answer or not. 4.4 meters. Hmm. Oh, 4. Point, how did I get 4.38? How did I do that? Okay, they rounded it up to 4.4 meters. <coughs> Okay, so that's the first part. B, what will be the speed of the objects as they leave the end of the barrel? Okay, so the speed is just velocity, the magnitude of the velocity. So the velocity as a function of time is going to be the derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So the derivative of t squared is 2t, so we'll get 18 times 10 to the third meters per second squared times t minus 
And then we take the derivative of t cubed, which is 3t squared. So 3 times 8 is 24. So you get 24.0 times 10 to the fourth meters per second cubed times t squared. OK, so that's for the velocity. All I have to do is plug it in at the time. So this is nothing any more than we did in chapter 2. And again, you'll see the units work out to meters per second, which is the units for <coughs> velocity. OK, so we have 18 times 10 to the third. Or we could put 1.8 times 10 to the fourth. Hit it way times 0 0.025 times or minus 24 times 10 to the fourth times 0 0.025 squared. And I get 300. So the answer is 300 meters per second, which is right. OK. And then the final one, this is the one that's new, <coughs> is uh, the instantaneous acceleration is equal to the instantaneous force divided by the instantaneous. Well, actually, what we're trying to do is figure out what the force is, right? Force. So force equals mass times acceleration. So we just need um, what the acceleration is at the, that same time. Actually, they wanted a zero and the final time. So to find the acceleration, the acceleration is a function of time. It's the derivative with respect to time of the velocity. So if we come down here to velocity, this equation right here, we take the derivative. The derivative of t is 1. So we get 18.0 times 10 to the third meters per second squared minus 24.0 times 10 to the fourth. Well, let's go ahead and multiply it out. So the derivative of t squared is 2t. <coughs> so we're going to multiply this by 2. That'll give us 48 times 10 to the fourth time, and the units are meters per second cubed and multiplied by t. Come again, it's meters per second squared. And now we just plug in zero. So that means the first term is there, but the second term goes to zero. So the acceleration at time t equals zero is 18 times 10 to the third meters per second squared. Now, these are the accelerations. To get the forces, all we have to do is just multiply by the mass. OK. And then we look at for the acceleration at that time. So we get 18.0 times 10 to the third meters per second minus 48 times 10 to the fourth meters per second cubed times 0 0.025 seconds. Something's wrong here. Hmm. Maybe not. I get 6,000, which is 6 times 10 to the third meters per second squared. So it starts out at 18 times 10 to the third. It decreases down to 6 times 10 to the third. So our force at 0 is going to be our mass, which must be given somewhere. 1.5 kilograms, so it's mass times acceleration. So the mass is 1.50 kilograms, so we're good there, times acceleration, which is 18 times 10 to the third meters per second squared. That's going to give us newtons. So it's 1.5 times 18,000, 27,000. So the force here is 27,000 newtons. And then F at 0 0.025 seconds 
again, is, is the mass times acceleration, which we said was 6,000. One point five times six thousand nine thousand newtons. And it's going to be linear between the two points. Twenty-seven thousand and nine thousand. Okay, so that's it. So <laughs> really, the only thing you know, calculus-wise here is we just had to use <laughs> the definition of velocity and acceleration as derivatives of the displacement to find the acceleration. Once you have the acceleration, it's just a matter of multiplying by force. The instantaneous force is the instantaneous acceleration times mass.